Jack and Jacqueline Conoir. And the, you're going to say, where does Jacqueline Conoir come from? Uh, Jacqueline Conoir is my mother's maiden name, and she passed away when I was five. So when I started this, I thought, what better, you know, what can I do more for, for my mom than to dedicate my collection to her? So if you don't recognize my name on the, on the line, it is because it is my mom's name. But um, I'm just going to be really candid, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how I got started, because it's a really funny story, and then how we've managed to survive the uber difficult industry of fashion in Vancouver when fashion was almost non-existent when we first started which was 25 years ago and how we've overcome some of our challenges and continue to overcome challenges every single day because they never stop right so um, it, I was 18 years old and um, was constantly sewing garments for myself because my dad was just not cool and he didn't let me shop in the cool shops and I was really cool and so <laughs> I really really wanted to you know look fashionable and dress fashionably and so what I did um, it, I continued to sew my clothes and one of my cousins um, knew of a huge fashion show that was happening in the 80s at the nightclub called Richards on Richards and if some of you remember that club, you'll know that it was the hottest, the coolest, the best club in Vancouver. And um, I was going to be involved in a show there. So I was super excited and um, eager to do this. But uh, when I arrived, I realized that I had never been trained to do any designing. I um, was arriving with my clothes in garbage bags and all the trained designers were arriving with their clothing on rolling racks and great garment bags and I just thought what the am I doing here and uh, so what I just I thought never mind I'm just gonna you know let them take their garment bags off their um, off of their clothes and see how it goes and so that's what I did and a few minutes later the show went on and I was in there and uh, really quickly I ran to the washroom because my stomach was turning and I just I was nervous and I threw up I was just really, really, really um, thought, I, my God, what am I doing here? And while I was sitting in the bathroom, hugging the toilet bowl, <laughs> two of the ladies, two women um, after the show had come in, and they said, you know, there was this great black and white scene. And uh, this was the scene in that show. And uh, they were saying, oh my God, it was amazing. And the designer's 18 years old, and they actually called me a designer. <laughs> and um, so, you know, I thought, you know what? I think I'm meant to do this. And so I decided that um, I should actually go to Paris and become a real fashion designer. And that's uh, kind of where my journey started. These photos are going to be on the desk over there. And uh, this is a photo of me with all the other designers. And you'll notice our outfits like really outrageous. But I think you should take a look. Um, and this is Jacqueline Conoir. She's my inspiration, my guardian angel, and I truly believe that I am where I am because of some support that she's passing on to me um, from the higher powers. Um, when I first started, my I, you know, didn't know how to run a business. I didn't have an MBA. I didn't. I was a designer and I was creative. But I had friends and family and um, the entourage that I had around me really believed in me. And so I, um, I started my journey. Came back from Paris, decided I wanted to open up a shop. Um, I had my kids in there, my brothers, my sisters, my family, everyone was helping me out. And truly without them, I really couldn't have gotten off the ground. It was really impossible. Um, and so once I decided to, you know, once I created my collection, I knew that we needed to market it and brand it in a way that nobody else was marketing and branding their, their labels. Um, one, because no one was buying local. No one. Everybody wanted um, French, German, Italian, anything but local. And in fact, the reputation of Canadian designers what that, was that it was crap. It was not well made. It was not properly designed. And 
and I just didn't understand that. I didn't get it. I was fantastic. All my designs were perfect. And you know, why aren't you buying my clothes? I thought. And we put on fashion shows, and we did everything that we thought we should do. Um, but it was really tough for the first 10 years, uh, just until we established ourselves. And um, really what we decided to do right from the get-go was to do things differently than all the other designers. So not only did we um, market ourselves differently, but we branded ourselves um, and in, in the best way that we could at that time without a branding company. So we took amazing photos, um, we did huge shows, everyone else's shows were these little tiny tea room styles, we put on the whole gamut, um, we had food, we had alcohol, we had models, we had huge runways, and um, so, but still nobody bought. You know, it was really, really tough, and that went on for about 10 years. And, um, and then what we did, and, and also it didn't matter how much media coverage we got, we got pages and pages and pages of media coverage, and still it was really, really difficult. Um, I remember my dad bringing me groceries because it was just such a tough industry. And, and it wasn't just for me. Anyone who was in the fashion industry as a designer, it was really difficult. And even today, you'll notice that you know designers will come out of the gate and three years down the road, they have to shut their doors because it's, it's that tough of a business. We've been around for 25 years and we must be doing something right because we have this amazing space and an amazing team and two wonderful collections. But at that time, it was not easy. And then something changed. We decided that we were going to take ourselves off the main retail strip. I didn't want to compete anymore with Holt Renfrew and with all the boutiques on Granville and all the boutiques on Robson Street. And we came up with a really interesting concept um, that was uniquely our own and no one else was doing it. It was more like a New York style gallery fashion boutique off a main retail strip. And what we started to do is do uh, events and invite clients. Rather than waiting for clients to wait to come to us, we thought, we'll, we're going to bring you to us. And so that's what we did. And, um, and then everything changed. Uh, we opened up a new studio, 4,000 square feet, foot studio space. We made it hip and modern. And um, it was uh, really something that was, um, uh, I think, uh, I don't know, innovative for Vancouver because nobody else had done it. Everyone said to me, are you crazy? Leave the main retail strip, you're going to die. And, but, unfor but you know, luckily um, we did not give up and uh, we thought this was what was right for us and that's what we did. And shortly after that, people started to embrace local, our name was out there, we um, you know, just continue to do what we did. And before you know it, people thought we were huge. People thought we were much bigger than we were. And still today, everyone thinks we're much bigger than we are. Um, so anyways, things started to go really well and the collection was doing great and, you know, everything was plugging along and about 15, no, about 20 years into it, um, maybe 22 years into it, I was sitting at Shambar, my favorite restaurant. And, um, Right beside me was a, a lady and her girlfriend and the waiter went up to her and said, oh my gosh, you should try this new great uh, collect or this, this boutique, uh, it's Jacqueline Conoir, it's an amazing collection, you would love it. So he didn't know I was sitting there and she didn't know I was sitting there. And so her comment was, I've heard of the collection, I love it, I love, love, love it. It's fantastic for my mother. And I thought, oh my god, I was just like, what? And so, although we did an amazing job branding ourselves, we never really had any help. We've never, um, you know, we just thought, we followed our passion, we followed our instincts, and, um, and after being in business for 22 years and things going well, we uh, thought, you know, the economy was sliding and, you know, we need to stay up there. We don't want to slide with everyone else. So what we decided to do, we recognized two things. One, our client, yes, started with me when I was 22 years old, and I have clients that have been with me for 25 years. But if you do the math, these people were 20 
22 or 30 at that time, now they're going to be 45, 50, 55, 60. So my core customer had grown with me, loved me, has been extremely loyal, but they are now 55, 60 years old and probably moving towards getting out of the workforce. So we needed to recognize some things and some changes that we needed to make. And uh, so one of the changes we knew we had to do is um, appeal to a younger demographic um, and uh, also rebrand ourselves so that people didn't think that we were for your mother because we were absolutely not for your mother. Um, and when I say this, I'm a mother, I have a 21 year old, um, we're all probably mothers in here. but. The way she said it, the tone was, you know, oh, that's for my 65-year-old grandmother. <laughs> so I totally knew that uh, we had to make some changes. So the, the first thing that we decided to do was um, to introduce a new collection called Jack. Well, that was a process, what it was going to be called. Um, but uh, to, to introduce a new collection, which I was really excited to do because I'd been doing Jacqueline Conoir for 25 years, and I was really ready to, to do something new and interesting. And the second thing was that we needed to rebrand and reposition and refresh ourselves. Um, hence, we um, called upon Jane <laughs> the very next morning after that um, conversation at the table beside me. And uh, so we enlisted Jane and her company, and they've some, done some amazing work. We've been working with them for a year now. Um, so anyways, that is my story. I don't know if I've got to my 10 minutes yet, but all I can say is that I followed my passion. I did, I did what I thought was the best for my company. I never gave up. I worked 10 days a week and 24 hours a day. Um, I still love what I do, and I'll continue to do it. Um, with some assistance now. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much.